Hello there, fellow space captains. This is Connor, and welcome back to another Fractured Space Ship Overview. And today, we're going to be taking a look at this big fella here. The Paragon. Which is actually the only carrier in the game. Well, ship designed to be specifically a carrier. There are other ships in the game, like the Leviathan, Gladiator. Usually the larger ships that do have uh, a squadron or a wing of fighters or bombers. But this thing uh, is specifically designed as a carrier. And it's a very nice looking carrier as well. It is, uh, let me see, manufactured by Zarek Industries. So that's pretty damn cool. It's got the very Zarek looking bridge on the rear there. It's also got a forward launch uh, fighter control bridge or fire control bridge. Which is pretty nice. And the forward section here of the ship. With the runways and the landing pods reminds me of the um, heli carrier from the Marvel movies. But um, that's pretty much only the frontal area because the further you go back, the more into a Zarek ship it starts to resemble. So, the Paragon. Initial impressions. Well, I've been playing this thing for quite a while now since it was initially released way back yonder whenever the game was first released. Uh, it didn't look like this at all. It pretty much um, resembled the Centurion a lot more, this being the Centurion, but now it's got its own unique and pretty damn cool model. And it's one of the actual better models in the game, I think, at the, well, at the moment. None of them are bad, it's just that this one is a more recent design, so it uh, looks a lot better, more up to date, more up to scratch, and uh, looks really nice. Definitely looks and feels like a carrier, but it's... That's kind of where the awesomeness with this ship ends. Now, like the previous Paragon that uh, played it in a similar way, but differently to this one, uh, this ship isn't... It's not that good. I'm not sure if that's just the concept of a carrier to begin with in a game like this, it's just not being viable, but this thing is... I, I love the idea of having a carrier in Fractured Space, but it just does not work. So we'll have a look at the abilities, uh, the modules, you know, whatever else it has, and then we'll take it into a flight. But first off, I want to uh, mention that this ship is meant as a defense. It's not utility, it's not attack, it's defense. It has 13,500 hull strength, which is quite a lot. It's not as much as, let's say, the Gladiator or the Leviathan, but it is still a chunky bit of hull strength, which is nice. Its initial max speed is 385, which isn't that great, but I believe it used to be lower. Um, when it was first released, it was around 350, if I remember right. I'm not too sure if that's the exact number, but it's still not a fast ship by any means. It's a big ship. It's a heavy ship. So you come to expect that you know, speed's not going to be its uh, best attribute. But anyway, we'll read the little blurb here, and then we'll have a look at its actual uh, module loadout. So... The Paragon is a specialist ship that is focused on launch based systems, primarily fighters, bombers and utility drones. The Paragon can establish refueling slash rearming waypoints that it can use to set up forward defensive areas or establish ambush points. Juggling the Paragon's multiple wings in combat uh, in a combat arena is not a task for the faint hearted and it should be noted that the further the Paragon's reach, the less defense it can call, in, call on in case of an attack. So. Like a carrier, um, it's all about what it carries, which it mentions there. Bombers, fighters, and utility drones. Just going to take a wee drink. Ah, not, nothing like milk on a warm summer's day. Probably the worst thing, but as long as it's cold, I don't mind. So yeah, it's a ship that uh, is cool on the drawing board, but it doesn't really work. And the main reason it doesn't work is, I believe, it's bomber complement and just how they work. But anyway, we'll start off with um, this thing's main weapon. You know, it, it does have an actual weapon system that it can use pretty much all the time whenever its bombers aren't available. And that is the mini cannon, of which I believe there are three turrets that can be firing at any one time. The range is 15,000 meters, so that's not too bad. The base damage is 16 PPD, so that is horrible. Uh, and the refire rate is 0.08 seconds, which is pretty frequent. But with 13, 16 PPD, it's not that good. And with only three turrets, not that good. The Paragon is equipped with a 
with a multi-weapon system that is used to defend against close-range attacks on the enemy's squadrons of fighters, bombers and drones. And that's kind of what this thing is. It's like a point defense slash flex system. If you're, let's say you're attacking an enemy ship and they're not really focusing on you, which a lot of enemy ships don't do when you're in the Paragon because they can really easily avoid being damaged by you. The mini cannon, even whenever you're focused on them, doesn't do a great amount of damage. Over over time it will, but that's pretty much like any weapon in the game. If you ignore it, eventually it's going to take you out. But um, yeah, the, the main focus for this ship is what it carries. So the next one we have here are two different waypoints. The first is a cap mod, so that of course um, makes it easier to cap, like let's say mines or gamma or you know that type of thing. Or the detect waypoint, which is the one I've got equipped, which um, helps you pretty much detect cloaked ships. But we'll go through both of them here. So uh, max range is 18,000 meters. So you can fire this thing quite a distance away. Um, it can also be used for your fighters, bombers to you know rearm and uh, reload more quickly, I believe. Uh, but this one is capture inhibit. It inhibits the enemy from capturing a point, meaning it slows them down by 15%. It increases your cap speed by 15%, and its base cooldown is 43 seconds, and it will survive until replaced or, of course, destroyed. So it is handy having this in the field as a forward refueling point for your fighters or bombers. This one... You can pretty much just compare the two stats there. I pretty much use this detect one because I feel like it's more useful. Um, especially seeing how a lot of stealth and cloaked ships in this game will tear you apart. And you've not really got a decent way of protecting yourself. Really only the mini cannon. This thing doesn't have missiles or rocket systems or torpedoes or mines. So you're fairly limited in what you can do to defend yourself. Next, we've got the first wing of uh, fighter craft or flight craft. Ugh, flight craft this thing carries, which is the Paragon fighters. So they can stay on a mission for forty-five seconds. They do thirty damage per second. The wing size is twelve, so twelve fighters in the wing. Um, squad return to casualty cooldown is fifteen seconds. That pretty much means if you return the squadron of your own volition. It's going to take 15 seconds before you can launch them. The squad dead cooldown is 25 seconds. That's if they're all taken out. It will take 25 seconds before you can relaunch another wing. Fighters are also equipped to take down enemy bombers or drones. They can damage capital ships, but the rate of damage is slow as they try to break through armor. Fighters can also be set to defend the Paragon or an ally in the sector such that they will attack the enemies that come into range. Simple enough. Uh, the next fighters you have a choice of going with are my favourite, the Blink Fighters. So these things are a lot more versatile and can be used in a pinch. So max flight time is exactly the same. 30 damage per second, which is exactly the same. Only the Blink Fighters have 4 less in the wing. So they have 8. Uh, and the other 2 statistics, you know, with relaunching them are exactly the same as well. A smaller wing of fighters that have the ability to blink between targets... These fighters are equipped to take down enemy bombers and drones. They can damage capital ships, blah, blah, blah. Same stuff. So these things uh, are a lot better, in my opinion. There are four less, so they don't do as much damage overall. But um, they usually, if you can get them to an enemy target more quickly, usually that makes up for the loss of damage, I feel. Next, we have the biggest hitter on the Paragon, which is given its uh, compliment it doesn't really deserve. The Charge Bombers. Right, where do I start? Well, I'll just read out the info that's given here on them, then I'll tell you why these things are terrible. So the wing size is 8. They do 1 strike per run. The base damage they inflict is 250 PPD. Weapon range is 3000 meters. Squad return rate is 15. And of course if they're dead, it takes 40 seconds before they fully replenish and you can launch another wing. Charge bombers deploy a time delayed bomb near the target, acting as an area of denial tool or increasing pressure on an otherwise engaged threat. It is also recommended that waypoints are used to establish forward locations for the bombers to attack from, reducing their delivery time. Bombers can also be blah blah blah, set to defend yourself or, you know, a friendly target, that type of thing. Right. The, the whole issue with these things 
are the time delayed bombs they carry. Whenever your bombers drop their payload, you'll see like a little flashing red beacon from the bomb itself. And the, the quicker it blinks, of course, it gets to the point where it explodes. But they're so easily avoidable that even the, some of the heaviest ships in the game, like the Colossus or the Gladiator Leviathan, the Aegis, they can just easily avoid these things. And if they can easily avoid them, imagine what smaller craft can do. Imagine something fast like um, the Interceptor or the Pioneer. They would just laugh at you, really. And that's why this thing isn't that much of a threat and why even, you know, small attack craft or even healer or support craft intend, or sorry, tend to just like, completely ignore you. Because you, you're just not a threat. If they, even an, a player who's new to the game, all they have to do is notice whenever the little blinking red lights start going and they just fly in the opposite direction. And that's annoying. I would prefer if there was a different loadout option here. Maybe you could have like a wing of torpedo bombers, those types of things, uh, missile bombers, rockets, gunships, that type of thing. Or even just bombers that as soon as their payload hits or impacts on the target, then it detonates. Because these things I just don't understand. It says it's kind of like an area of denial tool but honestly not really they don't really cover that great of an area to begin with so there's not really a great area they can deny to, for starters it's just a terrible weapon it can be useful if it hits or in like gamma for instance if people aren't paying attention and they're focusing on someone else and then you launch these they do actually land their payload but it, it happens so rarely that the ship just doesn't feel viable in any sense it really doesn't, it just feels pointless at this point. <laughs> um, but anyway, we'll, I'll, I'll show you more in-game, like just how bad these things are. Uh, lastly, we have a choice of drone that we can use, okay? I'm not sure which one of these to go with. I pretty much tend to go with the mobility suppression drones, but I've learned that defense drones are better. Because the mobility suppression drones only last 20 seconds and they only slow the target's speed by about 10%, which isn't good. They've also got a very long squad dead cooldown of pretty much two and a half minutes, which is really long when you think about it. Especially since this could be more useful if it gave you a higher percentage of slow on the enemy and if it was a bit quicker. Like, let's even just say 20 to 30%. It would allow your charge bombers to actually do something. But. As it is, they don't. The defense drones give, uh, of course, whoever they're afflicted by, a 22.5% increase in defense. It lasts for 30 seconds, and this one only takes 100 seconds before it actually replenishes if your you know, drone squad is completely taken out, or 44 seconds, which is considerably less, if um, you just recall them yourself, which is handy. The last one are heal suppression drones which are useful as well but I've not really had much use out of them especially lately um, heal suppression amount is 70% the duration is 30% or sorry 30 seconds squad returned cooldown is 38 seconds and the squad dead cooldown is 94 seconds right now it does give a bit of a contradiction here it says heal suppression amount minus 70 but in the little blurb of info below it says reduce by target will gain by 90 percent which is a uh, yeah contradictory i'm not really sure which one to go with either i did google it to see if i could find something on the forums but couldn't find anything this here bottom part you know the point of fence not really important i always go with manual because the automated isn't really as useful and it's easy to just press number four whenever you can hear like missiles on their way. But anyway, it's a ship that I want to really like. I just play this now and again because I like the idea and feel of playing a carrier. I, I love the Battlestar Galactica series. It would be cool if this thing actually worked. But it's 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 terrible. What I really think something simple that I think could fix this is just 
two possible different options of loadout. Torpedo bombers, there's probably less, but they can, you know, more frequently actually connect damage on their payload, or even just, I don't know, missile gunboats, which are better at, you know, using them lower um, hull strength targets like supports or even attack craft. Whereas torpedoes could be, you know, used for turning the armor off of larger ships, but these are just pointless. I really can't understand why they haven't already implemented something into the game to fix this up or try and even sort it out in a in a way. But regardless, um, your crew that you go with, uh, it's up to you. I haven't really delved too much into the crew. I've got the carrier crew set up here. As uh, you know, for squadron cooldown, that type of thing, but nothing's going to save you in the Paragon. It's slow, it doesn't have any sort of blinks or jumps, so it can't uh, escape fights. It doesn't have any sort of speed boosts or buffs, so it, you know, it's fairly slow and it's really, really weak. And it's, it's dangerous to even, you know, go into a forward offensive in this thing, especially when you're alone. Because 90% of the time you're going to just get picked off because you can't escape. And that's why this thing fails. Not only the charge bombers, but the fact that it's not that mobile. And I don't mean mobile just, you know, uh, to do with its actual max speed. But just that it doesn't have any sort of even mobility drone increase. That type of thing. Uh, like the superlifter. It just fails in multiple areas. But... Anyway, let's get into a game and um, show you how it works, or more accurately, show you how it doesn't work. Okay, let's see, Alpha, Alpha, Beta. I suppose we'll go to Beta and support. Para Eliza. So, to begin, on my team we have a Crook in the Reaper, Para Eliza in the Destroyer, Div S Dude TV in the Infiltrator, Kalem 69 in the Protector. So it's a fairly nice composition for our side. And damn, the enemy team has a lot of mobility. Decent uh, mobile ships on their side, which isn't good. Especially just not to do with my speed. It's not as bad as it used to be, but it's still by no means agile. So. It just means they're going to be able to avoid my charge bombers all the more easily. Which isn't good. Let's see there. That's my bombs. See that? That's him avoiding them with great ease. And very little problem. Problem. Oh. And there's a destroyer, and that's me screwed. Superlifter is my main target. Look at that little damage there. It does mount up over time. And he's avoided my bombers again. Even if the fused timer is a little bit shorter, it would possibly make it better, but it's just there's too many problems with this ship at the moment. Oh, hello. Well, he shouldn't have done that. Yeah. Why, is, why are they jumping out? What are they doing? Uh, I have no idea. I forgot to mention who they were anyway. On the enemy team we've got Last Call on the Ghost, Prince, Hello, in the Superlifter, Kami in the Sentinel, Main Gearbox in the Destroyer, and Dassel of Apatros in the Persecutor. Right. Seems they're pushing back on Alpha, but I need to recall my wings. Sentinel and destroyer. Superlifter's back. So there's four of us here in this lane. What happened to the guy? There's four of them here as well. Right, let me just show you the um, charge bombers going after the destroyer. 
which is of course not a fast why is he jumping home again what's he doing who's the destroyer main gearbox is that a bot can't be a bot but it's either someone that's just really really dumb or a bot I'm leaning towards bot right now because there's nobody that's Why are they all jumping out like this here in, in combat? I mean, that Sentinel, he's uh, he's going to survive that. Oh dear. Right, okay. What's up with the frame loss whenever somebody jumps into the sector? Right, bombers. Let's see if you can even damage a destroyer. It's one of the slowest ships in the game. Please do something. I beg you. Oh, there we go. So it seems against bots or inept players, you can actually land some of these charge bomber payloads, which is pretty nice. I'm going to use the Defense drones on myself. Give me a little bit of a buff. There we go. Job done. And I am going to jump back to base and go to Alpha really quickly. It doesn't feel as bad as it used to. It's, it's possible that there's been changes. Ready to leave port. But I don't know which patch or update I had to look at to see if there were any differences made from the last time I played. Um, that rhymed. Didn't intentionally plan to have it rhyme, but it uh, doesn't really matter, does it? The only thing I saw different that I could recognize at least was the um, change in speed from 350 to 385 was it? I can't remember. Oh the ghost is gone. One thing I forgot to mention, um, I suppose it's better to mention it now, is that your fighters are very good at de denying enemy cloak chips the ability to cloak because of course they're pretty persistent in their attack. Incoming message. Return to base for a refit. Lexan out. Orders confirmed. Yeah, the ghost is around here somewhere, but of course I've got that detect waypoint set up. Just looking at the mini map. Oh no, he's starting to learn. Okay, defense drones on myself. Why is he jumping? I don't understand the destroyer at all. Oh, there he is. Where'd he go? Where'd he go? Come on. really focusing there on the sentinel which I should have been I was more worried about the ghost but the mini cannon is not great to begin with even on a sentinel which is not that good <laughs> to say sentinel is one of the squishiest or more squishy ships in the game guys beta is under threat um, you might want to go there maybe I don't know, could be a possibility that you maybe want to go there? No? Maybe? Jump 
complete idiots. They really are. Yeah, launching bomber wing. It's a super lifter, so it's um, way too maneuverable. Oh, destroyers showed up. Using defense drones on myself. Gonna pop the attacking waypoint down there, just so they can rearm, refuel more quickly. And they dropped their payloads in a completely useless position. They were anticipating where he was going to go to, but he's. I'm assuming this is a player because it's kind of learning to pick up where they're or how to dodge the actual charge bombers and I'm going to go to Alpha here support our team at the moment we're getting our asses kicked heavily whoa massive drop in flames there he is Damn it. More attack. And because I'm putting points in the attack and your charge bombers slash blink fighters count as an attacking module, that will of course reduce their cooldown. Where is he? No, why would you surrender? You know, it's it's those people that are the problem in this game. Before we're even 15 minutes into the game, they decide to surrender. When we've got the potential of calling it back, or pulling it back from the jaws of defeat. Go, my charge bombers. Be useful for once. Destroy the destroyer. Quite ironic. And there goes the superlifter. Even the superlifter has missiles. <laughs> Watch the blink fighters just, of course, blink into the targets. Whoa, okay, persecutor's gonna rack me here. Is the destroyer gone? Alright, is that the persecutor jumping out? It is, yeah. Why are the bots still in the game? Please remove them, edge case. If it is, if that destroyer is a bot, then it feels hollow getting kills against them. There we go. Recalling all fighters and bombers. Ah, oh, crap. Okay. Pulling back, going to home base, and then jumping to alpha. Come on. Here we go. There was somebody around here. There he is. Blink fighters, get him. Don't let him cloak. Where? 
At least he's not that accurate. That ghost, which is good. You're not cloaking this time, bud. Come on. Would you just get there, please? Blink fighters seem more inept than they used to. Oh, destroyer's getting his ass kicked by a sentinel. <laughs> How is that possible? Ah, go on, you good, and look at B. I'm gonna recall my fighters and bombers so that they're fresh for the next engagement. Reaper, why do people just go? What is it? What is it? Um, kill blind or something? I don't know what the saying is. Or well, the expression. If the rice glaze over and they think of nothing but the kill, even if it leads to. their death and it's not to the benefit of the team this game is not about getting kills well it is you have to get kills to slow the enemy but it's also about capturing points which is more important so there we go I'm using my waypoint as a waypoint which is which is nice and we're level 8 so what I'm waiting for. There they are. Kit, Sentinel again. Put my protection or defense drones on the protector. Yeah, they're, they avoid them way too easily. They're just not a threat. No defense. Take out those missiles. Yeah, this is going to be fun. Oh, he's sitting still. Go, bombers, damn it. Come on. There we go, we got some hits. Good stuff. Is there anybody else around here? Where did that protector go? Am I, did they leave me here? I suppose beta's under attack, but still? Why would you give up the initiative like that? It's only one enemy sh Oh, God. I give up on the human race. Nothing devalues victory like an easy kill. Nothing devalues victory like idiots. Complete and utter idiots. Gamma guys, gamma, 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 get the fuck over there. Gamma right. on the Come on, look at the map. I played this twice last night, trying to get a decent uh, game for this overview. I don't think it's going to be possible. I think playing the Paragon is just a handicap to your team. Let them win. We are well. That's the attitude that you know makes us no match for them. We are no match for them. And they're in a paragon. Oh, he's trying to jump. Oh, and he hit an asteroid. Did he? Uh, if only my charge bombers weren't completely and utterly useless. And they're not. Ah, oh, get in. There you go, reverse psychology. Works on fighters and uh, fractured space. Fighters and bombers. Oh, this ship's infuriating. Come back. Who is that? Is that the infiltrator? Is 
he sitting idle? He must have jumped out. Recalling all wings. Yeah, they've had us in the back foot since the game started. It's not helping that our team are like, Give up! We are no match for them! Don't recap, just defend. No, I don't think you know how the game works. Doesn't take five people to defend a base, especially when they jump in one at a time. Oh, there's a big fella. Protector, have some drones. Alright, now the mini cannon, as I said, does very little damage, but if you fire something for long enough, it's gonna do sustained damage. And they're both in the art of fire. Good stuff. Focusing on the super lifter, please. You know, it's always baffled me in multiplayer online games how people don't understand or can't grasp the fact that healers should die first because they're healers. If they don't die first, then, um, well, this happens. So, the best hint you'll ever have for any online game ever? Dude, shut up. Fucking hate people like that. How did you play an infiltrator and get four kills? Like, come on. And now I am the one with salt. May I play one game, first game of the day. Did considerably well for um, six kills, minus ten MMR, which is good. Didn't do any worse, didn't do any better than the rest of the team. I was in the Paragon. I didn't do horribly. So that's not bad. Didn't do Infiltrator bad. But, yeah, I would try and get another game for the Paragon that's slightly more exciting and exhilarating, but it doesn't happen in the Paragon. What you saw for the few times the charge bombers landed damage is as exciting as it gets. You're not happy that you've done damage, you're just happy that you've not come out of the game with nothing in the way of kills, which is embarrassing, but I, I like the ship. The art team, of course, did an amazing job designing it. The ship, uh, it does have its own unique playstyle and feel. Even if it's not good, it still feels unique. I would just wish that you did have a different option for a loadout in the way of bombers. Torpedo bombers, I would love. Uh, torpedo bombers that you know, specialize maybe in taking armor out of enemy ships, like Pulse, or not uh, Pulse, Plasma. Torpedo bombers and then just normal torpedo bombers, that would be pretty cool. But as it is, the ship is, um, god-awful. It really is. Uh, some of you might have different opinions, but, um, you're wrong. You just are. And I'm the one... If you've watched this channel for long enough, you'd know that I love this ship. And I've loved the idea of this ship. And couldn't wait for it to be reintroduced, but it's just... It's... If you put this, or pit this thing against any other player in any other ship that knows what they're doing, it just doesn't hold a candle to it. But I'll, I'll end the video with there. Uh, even though there's still bots in Fractured Space, I'm going to be recording more games because... Oh, well, I still have that itch that needs scratching, and Dreadnought is getting old with the grind. But anyway, if you've liked this video, then that's good. That's That was the intention. If you would like to support the channel and pretty much help me out in a great, great way, there's both a Patreon link down below and a donation link. I would be very, very appreciative if you could give anything, no matter how small, as this is my only source of income at the moment. In the UK, I don't even get, um, we call it the Dole, which is, you know, support alliance. 
But um, yeah, also join the Discord where you can chat with people like ourselves who like these types of games. Sci-fi games, capital ship action, that type of thing. Or even, you can talk about anything you want really. Uh, so yeah, hope you're enjoying whatever you're playing, whether it's in space or otherwise. And I of course, like always, we'll see you next time. Bye bye.